Oh, that, oh, oh. And she tried running me over in Ramadan. I know. Ass. I know. But, but, and I had two more witnesses with me. I, with I, I know, and so, the Jack. That's what I'm saying. Like, go to the authorities, <laughs> go to the police. I wonder what he did to trigger her. I wonder what he done that caused her to react like that. I wonder what he must have said. A man is go through domestic abuse. And this is something that a lot of men are going through. I know we're just in case. Just quickly, just take off there. The beginning of this event was a reaction to three deaths in the community. So this event specifically is just focused on this okay. issue. And so, inshallah, we will have so, to work. And I don't know what time you came, but that was addressed before. The, the only thing I would just add is that I hope that the board here for this organization will screen panelists that come through here. Sure. Because I was married to one of the panelists who actually accused me of Zina falsely. Right. So we're going to cut this off because yeah. it's not the right way to do this. And I would request to speak to you. She basically assaulted me as well. So. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here as an imam, um, please follow brother. I want you to stop and contemplate for a moment. What would you do if lies and slander and stories from the figment of one's evil imagination about you or your loved ones were being spread within your community? Just imagine the people back in the day when they would have to travel certain distances for months or even years. What is one thing that they would carry with them? The Quran. Why? Because they did not have it on their mobile devices or their gadgets. Brothers and sisters, imagine you have a app, the Qurani app, which not only shows you how much rewards you get, but reminds you to read the Quran, gives you reminders. Download the Qurani app now and let it testify for you on your Maqiyama that you read it wherever you was. There was a video that was sent to me and this video was of a brother and I watched this whole video, watched it entirely. And I'm going to tell you guys why I watched it entirely and listened to it very carefully. This is a phenomenon that's happening. And a lot of people, you know, I say this before over and over again, from the Bitter Truth show, to the marriage documentary, to a project that I'm working on, which is an app. People think genuinely, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my witness, Wallahi al-Azim, if I am doing these projects for the money, if I am now uh, be doing it just for the views or the fame. Now, do I struggle with these things? Of course I do. Does my intentions one day for me, one day for that, uh, against me? Of course I do. So I'm not entirely saying that I'm free from the fame and the views and this, that, that come, um, no. I have intention problems, but that's besides the point. I start these projects because I see a problem. And to me, when I see a problem, I like to deal with the problem. That's personally myself. And as men with our biology, we're problem solvers. Really, we're logical thinkers. So to me, when I saw this problem, I thought to myself, subhanAllah, that I should do it. There should be some sort of a solution. That's why I started the Bit of Truth show. One of the reasons I started the Bit of Truth show because there is a direct attack on the family unit. But I saw a lot of aggression. A lot of aggression. Not only aggression, dhulm, oppression against men. The tide has changed. Yes, men can be the culprits of domestic violence. So could women. Studies show that women are as violent as men. It's the only difference between the man and the woman is what? That a man uses more lethal force. Because if I was to, you know, hit my wife, yeah, for that matter, it will cause more pain to her than she hits me. Unless there's exceptions to the rule that she's an MMA fighter. Yeah, okay. So in that aspect, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislates if you fear aggression or um, your wife crossing limits, that what the protocols you do. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That you speak to her. And if not, then you depart from the bed. And if not, then you can use some kind of a force to restrain her. But interestingly, in a different verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give the same prescription to the woman. Rather tells the woman to get the family pe family members involved. Why? Because it would be un it, it wouldn't make sense to ask the woman to use some kind of a force to uh, restrain the man because she does not have those capabilities to do so. Now, with this very instance, Subhanallah, I'm watching this video and I'm thinking to myself, how many Muslim feminist women, feminist or not feminist, are watching this? And I bet you any money you can, and I will tag you the link. This is of a brother who who was married to a female um, speaker. Yes. A female speaker who is giving dawah, who if you saw her hijab, if you saw her face, you would not in a million, billion years think this woman do all the dhulm oppression to the level of trying to get, the, get him killed. Yes? None of us would think that. And you know what? There will be so many Muslim women, feminist, liberal, values, watching that video. And I bet you any money, the question that they will say is the following. I wonder, I wonder what he did to trigger her. I wonder what he done that caused her to react like that. I wonder what he must have said. I wonder... It... You see, as men, just because we look physically strong doesn't mean we are stronger mentally. There is a lot of women, because that's why you look at statistics, a lot of men are the ones that take their lives. You will need to ask and beg the question, why? Do we... Is there awareness raised to this? No! Who cares? Who cares? And even if you look at Islam, there is strict, strict guidelines to how 
to deal with how when I mean deal, I'm not talking about that sense, yeah? How in, in when you're dealing with your wife, your sister, whoever that may it may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put protocols in place. And Allah's given the right, like Allah says in the Quran, one daraja above for a man because of the responsibilities that he has. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if I was to ask anybody to prostrate to anybody, it would be the wife to the husband. Why? Why are these protocols in place? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how he created a woman. He knows how he created a woman. And he knows that, for example, how he's created them, them and how they should be dealt with in different situations when they're emotional, when they're upset, when they're going from the highs, from their lows, even when they're ca causing dhulm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed the man to be a leader. So when you watch this video, you see the levels this brother went through. And I'm going to say something on this as well, because I, I personally, I'm not told, I'm, there's parts where I'm blaming the brother, but there is only for one thing. And this can apply to all us men. We have forgotten how to be men. We have forgotten so much so that we are cowardly. We are cowards. We do not have the guts, the audacity to say something. We are afraid to tell our woman folk, our wives, you are not coming out of the house without that lipstick. You are not wearing that dress. I do not want you to speak to that person. Yes? Or you have to be at home at this time. You are not going out at this time. And when I'm talking about these things, I'm not talking about being strict. I don't talk to my wife like that. You know? Unless she requires me to. Alhamdulillah. I don't need to. I don't need to come and tell her. There's mercy and rahmah. We're not talking about that. That's, put that to a side. Of course, that is a given in a marriage. Alhamdulillah. Every man should be the protector, provider, have love, rahmah, mercy, and take care of their kids. Yes, if you are a man who work or are self-employed, whatever, and you're in the house, Wallahi al-Azim, I enjoy looking after my kids. I love changing my kids. I love changing their nappies, unless they're puked. Yeah, that's not for me. I'm like, sorry, I can't do that, yeah? Unless it's a necessity. Okay, and there's my, there's my daughter laughing at me at the back, yeah? So me, I love spending time with my kids. But the point is what? And we should, as men, it doesn't mean that we should be like, you know, we cause ruling, oppression, etc. That's not being a man. The point is what? Look at the level of loan this man went through. And let me tell you guys something, which is personal. And it's in the marriage documentary. In 2015, myself, there is this personal, personal story that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Because when I heard this story, I could relate to it. Yes? Mine was a bit more crazier on a different side. And why am I mentioning this to you? I don't need to mention this to you guys. The reason I'm mentioning it to you is because men are going through this. I hear multiple stories of brothers who cannot see their kids who their wealth and property has been taken off them. They have been accused of RAPE. I know of a brother who, when he called me, he was in a cell, prison cell. Why? He's like, bro, I am being accused of RAPE. And he's taken off by Allah. He goes, bro, I never done that. Women are causing great lengths of dhulm and oppression. And how many sisters, female speakers are talking about this? How many? How many? I sent this video to one specific sister on purpose. Yes, she knows who she is. I'm very straight up to the, blunt to the point. But she, the reply that I got was, she watched a couple of minutes of it and it was that she felt it was messy. And I have to be like, well, hold on a second. When it comes to the brothers, you know, and you know, people love to jump on it. Like, I mean, just imagine for a split second that my wife, or if I imagine I had an ex-wife, an ex-wife came out and said, Ali, and she was crying and said, Ali hit me or did this. Bruv, without verification, Without answering questions, without even knowing the not, how, what, who, when, is it even true? There would be a, let me tell you something, I would have been hung upside down on a tree. Or upside down on a tree. But when it's a man that's going through this, nobody's come to the help. So much so that religious leaders, yes, there were some names from there, I don't want to get into details. Because I need to I have the contact details and I would like to understand and clarification more. But even then we can see the feminist narrative, the liberal narrative. The men, imams are afraid. Sheikhs, muftis, duat are as afraid. I'm not afraid. I am not afraid to talk against them, against anybody for that matter. That is the reason why I'm quite vocal on certain points. There are brothers, brothers who have been threatened with all sorts. Why? Because they choose to Islamically get married again. Islamically. You're not going to see your kids. In-laws, the in-laws flipping on them. All these other elements. Why? Because of something halal that's being done. Go to that level. Yes? Religious in-laws. Religious in-laws praying five times a day in the masjid. Religious in-laws. The moment the guy wants to get married again. Khalad. Alas, we, there's no Islam. Islam is gone out the window. So, 
I can see that. In, and, and it really triggers me because how many people are talking about the dhulm that is being done and the system is also on the woman's side men who cannot see their kids there was another brother subhanallah there was a retreat that I went to yeah I don't want to get into details I was there this brother like you know he, he went through a divorce and he hasn't seen his kids in about three weeks time and I can see the sorrow in his heart and I thought to myself just imagine for a second I take my kids away from my wife for no apparent reason. Yeah? For no apparent reason. Imagine she did something that is permissible in Islam and I just took it. Look, th th there'll be so much chaos. There'll be so much, everybody will be talking about it. Why are people afraid when somebody has been wronged? Oh, the community to hell with the community. If a brother is being wronged, we need to be more vocal. So I'm calling out to all the sister speakers out there. They should be talking about this matter directly or indirectly. This is a growing problem where women are causing great levels of dhulm and oppression unjustly on innocent men. And one thing that I'll say, I'll say to all the sisters, Sister Fatima Barakatullah, may Allah bless and preserve her. And these are not sisters I'm saying that they, they don't talk about. I'm just calling out to our sisters. Sister Naima B. Robertson, alhamdulillah, solid sister, mashallah. So is Sister Fatima Barakatullah. Sister Lauren Booth, you know, um, um, Yasmin Mujahid. And the list goes on. And even brothers, make a big deal out of this. Talk about this. Talk about this. And I'm going to end on this note. I want everybody to talk about this. Madhu Jannah, Muhammad Hijab, all the brothers that watch this, I'm contacting them in private as well. Talk and raise awareness of this and warn against this woman, Sister Dunya. Yes? Sister Dunya. Yeah? Oppressing people in the dunya. Your name is Sister Dunya. You are going to question, be questioned about it in Akhirah. And one thing that I'm going to say to the brother, my dear brother who's watching this, I am sorry that you had to go through this. Even though you are a grown man, still, we don't shed tears as men. We don't shed tears. We cry in internal, inside. Yes? Because if we do, we'll even be called, you know, oh, you know, grow up, etc. Nobody will believe us. Yeah? We accuse of so many and we carry the, so, the, the, the burden of so many things on our shoulders, including our family, our responsibility. Yeah? Men are there to put their lives at the risk for their family. I know many men who will die for their family members. But my brother, I want to give you an asiyah. Yes? I come from a jahiliya. There are certain things that I've been exposed to. I have become, I've been a Muslim for the past 10 years understand the biology and the mentality and the psychology of a woman the fact that you were saying I did this for her and that for her she wanted this and I gave her this and this and she wanted that and I did this my brother the moment you was mentioning this I'm not having to go at you I'm not having to go at you yeah you was the better person in this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed her yes and if she wants to come and talk about her side which I think the evidence is clear from his side no problem I will even link that as well yeah even though the matters are clear the fact that she couldn't go to the police and report this stuff shows me what she is about. Yes? And I know personal experience as well. So, to me is this brother. If you go and give a woman everything that she wants, I don't blame nobody, my brother, in this very instance, sorry. Yes, if she's, she's wrong and she wronged you. But you, you need to understand. A woman is programmed in a certain way. She needs a leader. And by the way, I'm not saying you're not a leader. Please, please understand me. She needs a man, a leader. When he says no, it's a no. Because you have chosen that leader for your household. And once again, I'm not talking about doing oppression and dhulm on your wives. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would give us a clear criterion. Yeah? Clear sunnah. Yes, we have to know how we treat our wives. But he's also given us strict guidelines how to deal with the, our wives when they cross the mark. Yes? So, to us, mercy and rahmah should be there. But also, there needs to be certain things. When you cut, you cut. Yeah? And my principle in life is what? Whoever it may be, my loved ones, or a person that I care for, I will give them my 100%. The moment I notice, or the moment I feel, and the moment I sense that my kindness is being taken for weakness, and my generosity and my care is being taken for granted, and I am being now, you know, then what I do is I cut that, you know that tap? I cut that water tap nicely. And they use that flowing water and they start realizing and they start poking and seeing little driplets. And they're like, hmm, you know, it was good when it was good. You need to understand the psychology of a woman. And the Prophet Muhammad said, What? The woman who prays a basic salah, does the basics, and is protects her chastity, her modesty, when her husband is away, and is good to her husband. Her husband says, I am pleased with, with my wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to that woman, Enter Jannah through any door. Why is there not a hadith pertaining? To the, this uh, opposite way to a woman This doesn't mean that you don't treat women well No, 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 no But it can show you 
that the psychology, which is what? Sadly, that we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he went to the Hellfire and he saw majority of the inhabitants are women. And why? The companions asked, did they commit kufr towards Allah? He said, rather no. They are ungrateful to their husbands. That if their husband does so many good things, one bad thing, I have seen nothing good from, good from them. And the Prophet Muhammad gave a solution to the women that were asking about this, which was what? He said to them, give in sadaqah. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, save yourself from the fire even if you give half a date in charity, sadaqah. So my dear brothers and sisters, please, please, and Imam Sheikh Muftis, this woman who looks so miskeen in this hijab that you will never in a million years think that was the biggest shayateen in the marriage, outside the marriage, and probably till this day. And nobody in that um, community raised awareness to this. He was even in a, uh, a talk, went on a mic and um, asking the question, they disregarded him. Imagine a sister coming to an event and crying and saying, my husband beat me. There'll be World War Seven. World War Seven. there'll be uh, nuclear bombs thrown everywhere. But when it's a man, who cares? Because men don't shed tear. But internally, we suffer. And you look at statistics, men are more prone to commit suicide. So my dear brothers and sisters, please raise awareness to this. And those female, female speakers, you guys as well, should be talking out against this. Enough is enough. That's all I have to say. Till next time, may Allah bless you guys, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.